first rule in grip sport is you tell everyone about grip sport. You know, crushing, pinch grip, thick bar, wrists. If the best guy in the world can't lift 100 pounds on it, I, I don't give a shit about it. We've been focusing on a lot of different grip athletes. I've been interviewing a lot of different people. Um, and, and a lot of people have different strength back, uh, backgrounds as well. But with me today, I have John Mauser. So welcome to the show, John. How are you? Uh, doing good, man. Um, just wanted to bring up, you know, like, like I was mentioning, you know, I, it is the grip show. We are talking grip strength, but a lot of us have backgrounds beyond just, you know, grip sport or something like that. It's not so specific. And, uh, you're definitely one of those people you've done a variety of things. Do you mind just kind of giving the listeners maybe just a quick rundown of all the stuff you've done? I mean, it doesn't have to be everything, but just your basic kind of strength background or your journey into competition and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I started, um, I actually started training, um, I guess kind of late, uh, for compared to some people, I think I started lifting weights when I was 17. Um, and it was for pro wrestling. I didn't play any school sports or anything. Um, just wanted to look like an athlete so I could do professional wrestling. And, um, so, I, you know, kind of started out with bodybuilding type stuff. Um, I don't call myself, I never called myself a bodybuilder cause I didn't compete, but that's kind of what I was doing. Um, and then, uh, the independent scene in pro wrestling is, uh, kind of, um, it's kind of rough, uh, and you don't get paid a lot. So eventually I decided I'd go to college instead. And, um, <laughs> I kind of fell out of that and got into, um, MMA and boxing and submission wrestling and a bunch of different martial arts stuff. So then I geared my, uh, training kind of towards that. Um, somewhere around in there, I also found strongman. Um, so I was dabbling in that, um, Eventually, uh, I dropped most of my martial arts activities and focused purely on strongman. While doing that, I found there's all these other fascinating strength sports like stone lifting and steel bending and grip sport and arm lifting and arm wrestling and all this kind of stuff. And I just kind of was like, well, I got to do all this and uh, started doing all of it. And um, that's kind of where I'm at now. Just kind of jump around and do everything right now. The big focus, I guess, is arm wrestling. But um, I'm still, I have a stone lifting show next year I plan to do and uh, uh, steel bending and a bunch of other things. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I think that's a pretty good rundown. And uh, yeah, interesting. There's, there's, I don't know, I'm about half of those that I've done. Like I said, we talk about like the martial arts and stuff like that, or maybe some more power lifting based training. Um, um, there, there, there's some crossover there, like some stuff I've done. Now, when it comes to like, uh, arm wrestling, moss wrestling, uh, so some of those different ones, you know what I mean? That we, we come across, I haven't really messed with it, but I've obviously been, been to the expo, seen people do it and stuff like that. And I'm aware of it, but, uh, by no means am I like any expert on some of that other stuff that, that you've been involved in. So it's always interesting hearing somebody else talk about, I don't know, just their kind of specialties or things that they're, you know, putting their time towards. Um, so really, I guess we could just kick it off with, um, Basically, in in the grip world, most people are focusing on their hands, wrists, fingers. You're know, pretty much shoulder down almost uh, when when they're doing the stuff. You know, now axle deadlift. Yes, there's some other stuff that kind of hits the full body. But I was kind of mentioning we we, uh, we think that uh, you know some of these people are kind of their body's their limiting factor. So when it comes to grip, you get a lot of grip people that have extremely strong hands, but then they have weak backs or weak hamstrings. The rest of their body just doesn't really match up and their body actually almost becomes the limiting factor. Now mm -hmm. I bring that up to you because, you know, you're somebody that I see like hitting box squats, doing all kinds of, you know, lifting with chains, different stuff. Um, is that something that you've kind of noticed in the grip world that, you know, have you, have you come across that? Yeah. Uh, you know, not from, the top guys, top, top women, uh, obviously, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say like, you know, but that's a very small, when you're talking about the top people, that's a very small, um, percentage most of the time. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking at like a pyramid, that middle section and that base of that pyramid, yeah, there's a lot of people I see, um, that'll miss lifts, especially like you said, like if it's, uh, an Apollon's axle double overhand, mm -hmm. you know, cause for a grip lift, you can move a, uh, significant amount of um weight with that 
and their back might not hold up. Their hamstrings might not hold up. And I've definitely seen people miss lifts because of that. Uh, and I just, I don't think that, um, that should be happening. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, you know, your back has a great potential to be way stronger, um, than your hands on an axle bar. So, uh, I think they're, they're definitely missing something in their, uh, their training. They're leaving a lot on the table. Okay. Now, aside from maybe some full body strength, is there anything else in the world of grip? And like I said, I, I'm not, you're not technically just a grip guy or anything. I mean, you obviously are well versed in strength sports. So, I mean, you know, your way around a lot of grip stuff, but you have that other perspective that you kind of bring to the table. Um, is there anything else maybe that gets overlooked or you think that uh, some of the main grip, not main grip people as in like bigger names, like you mentioned, but the general population of grip people that maybe they're getting hung up on, or maybe that they're, maybe they're falling for some trends. Maybe they're falling into some traps and they're kind of making some mistakes along the way. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think a lot of people just try to play the sport. Um, you see this with a lot of things. If like other sports, um, you know, people just want to like, you know, you said you do a lot of martial arts stuff. Um, jujitsu is notorious for this guys just want to do jujitsu and they think, Oh, I'm going to do jujitsu and that's all I need to do to make it to the top. And I'm not saying that's never worked because there are a few people that, that, Hey, that's all they did. And they got to the top. But, you know, even if you look at the, the Gracie's or Machado, uh, uh, what's his name? Higgin Machado, um, all those guys, um, they were doing some kind of strength training. They were doing things outside of jujitsu to help get better. And I think just like any of those other sports, uh, grip guys, grip women, they do the, the same kind of thing. They just want to do one rep maxes on the rolling thunder or the penny pinch or the axle or whatever it is. And they're just trying to do those competition style lifts in the gym. And I personally think that the, the, the competition style lift, like the way that you're going to do it, in the competition is one of the worst ways to actually build strength. Um, it's an okay way to display strength or to prove a point, but as far as um, gaining benefit from it, I don't think it's very good, um, especially with the way loading pins are and mm -hmm. things like that. Now, I mean, you're, you're maybe lifting stuff an inch off the ground. So how much time is this thing actually being in your hand? It's not, um, so I, I'm a big fan of doing things to, to increase that time under tension. And I don't see that from a lot of people. They're just doing these short, quick little lifts and, and then inevitably they're, they're plateaued and they don't understand why. Yeah. That is something interesting to bring up that uh, I've seen as well, where a lot of times you're running with like a 12 or 15 inch loading pin. Then you'll have another three or four inches for the carabiner. Then however long the handle frame is, and then it depends on the stance they're pulling. Some of these people will right. take like an extra wide, like sumo stance on a rolling handle. And like you said, they break something off the floor that much. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, is that, you know, how much you can lift an inch or how much can you hold for a fraction of a second? You know, it, what does that really mean in the, I, I guess like the, you know, the, the big landscape of things. Um, so yeah, no, re really good point there. And uh, like I said, I, I see the same stuff. Um, is there anything that you would recommend people to get out of that habit? I mean, other than like, okay, scrap the loading pin, pull stuff from the floor. But like, is there, is there, I mean, I know that's kind of basic, but is there anything you would recommend there maybe that they could uh, adjust? Well, I think, um, let's be honest, most people get into strength sports because uh, they have a chip on their shoulder. It, you know, maybe it's, they have something to prove to somebody or something to prove to themselves or some sort of insecurity going on most of the time. And, you know, maybe they were small or maybe they were overweight or whatever. And that's what brought them to this whole thing. There's these insecurities. So there's a lot of uh, ego or um, like a lot of people say ego and they don't really know what that means. But when I say ego, I mean, actually like the, you know, the, the psychology definition of the word. Um, and that leads back to a lot of insecurity. So I think people want to do those competition style lifts because they can lift the most weight. And I hear mm -hmm. people say stuff all the time, like, well, I didn't like doing that because I, I couldn't use this much weight or um, like something I do is I don't use chalk in training most of the time um, because I want to limit the weight. 
I don't care how much I lift in training. It makes zero If it was difficult and challenging, I know nothing. Um, but I'm a little different. I know a lot of people can't handle that. They think, oh, if I'm not lifting this much weight, like, you know, for whatever reason. Um, so I would say, like, do something so far removed from those competition lifts that you have no way of making a comparison so that your ego can't be hit. Um, so, like, you know, grab something maybe of a similar size of what you're going to be lifting in the competition and do rows with it. Rows are harder than just like the standard stand up for mm -hmm. two inches with a deadlift or whatever. And, um, but you're not, you're not mentally going to be able to make a comparison and say, well, yeah. you know, I rode 85 pounds with this three inch axle bar. How does that compare to my one rep max on an apple on axle? Yeah, there's just no way to make that comparison. Right. And um, get your time under tension that way. If, if your ego is going to be hurt or, or you're, you're going to be plagued with insecurity. Um, but if that's not a problem, take those competition implements or whatever it is and start doing rows. I think the time under tension from rows is far greater than any competition style lift. Um, and you're also building your entire arm. I think your bicep and your lat is huge in a lot of um, competition lifts. Something I see from top people, a lot of them lift um, with a bent arm. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mean like in a full 90 degree or anything, but they have that bent arm and that's that radiant tension. Uh, Jed Johnson wrote a whole article about uh, radiant tension way back in the day. And they're utilizing that. A lot of new people don't do that. They lift with a straight arm. But uh, if you get used to rowing these implements, you get used to lifting with that bent arm. And that's, that's paramount. Um, with that bent arm, you, you can lift a significant percentage higher, in my opinion, on most lifts. Uh, unless it's something crazy. Like the Apollon's axle, it is hard to lift that much weight with bent arms. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rolling Thunder, Raptor, Hub, uh, Little Bighorn, any of that stuff, um, I have no problem lifting it with a bent arm. Yeah. And I think it's just a matter of getting your – you know, it's like almost like a – link of chain all the way down to your mm -hmm. hand to whatever you're holding. And as soon as you start to straighten that arm out, a lot of times you pretty much kill that chain and you're just relying yeah. on your hand and you, you just, you start losing all the body, you know, like you're talking about with right. all the tension and stuff. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think those are definitely some interesting points that people could kind of uh, take and at least, you know, think on it for a while, at least, you know, like the grip people, like a lot of grip people, they could kind of at least chew on that. And, uh, whether it be the rows, whether it be pulling from a deficit, longer hold, whatever the case may be, but just yeah. engaging the full body work, doing something that's, you know, removed so that they don't have to worry about it with their ego. That's very similar to like, uh, I don't want to spin off on a tangent here, but like um, Dave Tate from Elite FTS was talking about, you know, like after uh, hip replacement and going through all these surgeries and stuff, you know, like you still have that drive to like want to push for a max or a PR or, or find a way, but it's like, he can't do his old squat numbers though. Like I got to like mix up some variation that has no real direct correlation to my ego and what I used to do or, yeah. you know, what it is. So that's kind of a similar example where he, you know, battling from injuries and a lifetime of powerlifting. Um, he pretty much was coming up with like uh safety squat bar with reverse bands chain on a box. And it's almost like, it sounds crazy, but it's like, he's still, you know, pushing under, you know, maximum strain and still chasing something and still kind of getting that feel or getting the benefit from it, but not having to deal with the fact that it's probably half of what he used to lift or something. Um, does that, does that yeah. kind of make sense there? No, that makes perfect sense. I think, and that's exactly kind of what I was saying. Like a lot of people will, will say a squat, you know, if you squatted in your heyday, let's say you squat uh, 600 pounds and now you're injured or, older or whatever and you know four or five is murderous well do you want to go in the gym week after week and squat you know 365 knowing that one day in the past you had done 600 or whatever that might be tough for some people um but like you said if you figure out like oh well, i'm going to do these box squats instead and i'm going to reverse band and i'm going to add these change 
it's it's so much it's so far removed from the competition squat there's really no comparison you, you so mentally you're kind of safe right yeah. you're in this safe zone you can still make progress and you're not beating yourself up over it because you can't say well back in the day I, back in the day you didn't do this at all <laughs> so <laughs> you know so you're kind of uh it's like a safety yeah. net you've set yourself up for success um and, and you're not going to beat yourself up over it yeah, definitely. Like I said, definitely good points. And uh, hopefully people can kind of take something from that. Now, <clears throat> mentioning some of these different grip lifts and just kind of uh, grip training. Do you have a particular style of lift or a particular implement that maybe would be like your favorite? Just just curious. Um, a favorite implement. <clears throat> or like if you're um, training grip, what have... kind of yeah. I was gonna say, what kind of stuff do you gravitate towards? Like, is it the axle deadlifts? Is it something, you know, what's like your favorite stuff when it comes to that kind of uh, grip lane of strength training? Um, if, um, if I'm, if I'm training myself and I'm doing, and I'm training for a grip competition, um, I do a lot of rows uh, with whatever, whatever implement. And I do a lot of holds. Um, so just standing up and holding it. And I, I don't do it like these, people that jam it against their thighs trying to put an extra pound on the bar um you know <laughs> i probably don't have chalk on i'm doing it hard style i'm purposefully trying to hold it away from my body um, i'm trying to make my hands strong i'm not trying to show off for the gram or whatever um but yeah i do a, a lot of rows and a lot of holds um mm -hmm. i don't do um a lot of singles to be honest um i think uh for me, endurance, uh, hand endurance is a little more important because of all the strongman stuff I do. So I kind of do lean a little more towards that, but I find that it actually up then your rep work is usually better with a squat, but with grip stuff, I find doing the higher rep stuff, um, uh, helps out my one rep way better. And I think that's because grip is isometric and well, most grip, you know, a gripper, and there's a couple exceptions to the rule, but most grip, most competition grip events are isometric. Um, I think a lot of people in the sport don't even realize that like, you're not actually, your grip isn't lifting the thing. <laughs> your grip is holding onto it while your body is lifting the thing. Mm -hmm. What you're really training is your ability to hang on to the thing for the ride. And yeah. so I think doing holds or um, reps trains that ability better than just snapping something up to lock out and then slamming it back down. Okay. And then um, do you have any like of your, you've done so many different feats and I mean, we can get into some of the different performing things you've done too. Um, like old time strongman feats and all that stuff. Cause I mean, you have a whole, a whole gang of things there. Um when it comes to like, let's say non-competition lifts and we talk like Thomas inch dumbbell or other things like that, that's a hot topic. Cause I just put an episode out about the Thomas inch dumbbell. So that's kind of been a thing recently. Um, not because of me, I'm just saying that like this week, it's just been like a, a thing where like for the show at least. Um, but do you have like a favorite feat or any feat that you've done in the past? That like you had to work after a little bit and kind of chase, or do you still have anything that maybe you're gunning for? on the feet side of things? Um, I'm a big fan of um, the Hercules hold. Um, okay. I, love, I love a good Hercules hold. Um, maybe my favorite feet that I have done, um, Steve Schmidt owns a set of Hercules holds. I can't remember where he got them from. There's a whole story with how he got these, um, these awesome giant red pillars. I can't remember what they weigh each they're pretty heavy um and um he has them up at his farm in ohio and uh, uh he invites me up there to train sometimes and um i went up there and broke the field record on the um hercules hold so they're not really used in official uh competitions they're kind of mm -hmm. there at his place and um anybody can you know with his permission can go and um try these out and they he tracks the uh, records mm -hmm. for it. And um, I believe I still hold the record on those. I did that a few years ago. Um, but I really love stuff like that. Like, you know, there's like the Denny stones and they're just there and they're sitting there and it's not a competition like 
sanctioned thing, but you can go and there's somebody that officially judges it or whatever, and they keep track of these records. And I love stuff like that. Like, hey, here's a thing. Can you do it? And it, yeah. it's like, to me, it's way cooler when it's not a loadable thing and you can put a little fraction of a pound on it. Like, it's like, hey, this is the thing. Can you do it? If you can do it, how many times can you do it? That's really cool to me. I love feats of strength like that. And um, so I'm pretty proud of that one. Of course, I, I do love the inch dumbbell because it's the same. It, the inch dumbbell is the inch dumbbell. It's the same thing for everybody. Here it is. You can do it or you can't. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, now, just kind of bring it up. Like we went kind of competition lifts. We talked about some non-competition lifts. Now, one of the things you do is like a uh, almost like performing strongman type stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll yeah, be doing yeah. all kinds of different crazy feats. You, I mean, you've steel bending. You'll be doing like uh, levers with an axe, whatever, you know, all, all, all kinds of stuff. You'll be loading that up, you know, real heavy and, you know, doing wrist levers and stuff like that. Um, to you, what is some of your favorite stuff or some of the coolest stuff you've done, I guess, from a performing aspect? Um. I, the levering honestly is one of my favorite things to do um, for a crowd. Uh, you know, being in West Virginia, there's a big, um, you know, a, a blue collar presence here. Um, so like, you know, when you go to these, a lot of our shows are like festivals, mm -hmm. you go to these festivals, there's a lot of people from the coal mines or, or construction or, or whatever uh, carpentry they've all, um, you know, held and dealt with sledgehammers and, where they work at, they're all, the levering is just, it's a feat of strength that you don't even have to lift or know anything about strength sports and people will just instinctively try that. So here it's really cool because um, when you're doing that, people kind of have an understanding of it and um, they understand how difficult it is and they understand the leverage aspect of it. And like I said, they have a familiarity with, with the, um, the sledgehammer. Uh, so I really, um, enjoy doing that here. Now that may not be as big of a hit in like, you know, New York city or something, but, um, <laughs> the areas that I normally do shows, it, it works out, uh, pretty well. And, um, you know, my, both my parents actually at one point worked in the coal mines. So I kind of have a, um, I guess there's kind of some nostalgia or something there with that feat. Yeah. Kind of like a lineage or something. Yeah. You know, something tied to it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, are you are you still performing and doing stuff like that? Is that still something you're like actively doing, and you still, you know, you're still engaged in that? Yeah. So uh, we we did a bunch of no, not a bunch. We did a handful of shows this year. Um, we did a, a comic con. Actually, we had never done a comic con. That was super cool. Um, that was a really cool experience. Um, I think when people uh, want to do old time strongman stuff like that, uh, they imagine, because I did this, you imagine doing it for um, other strength sports people. Yeah. Um, but it's much harder to impress those people <laughs> <laughs> because they live, you know, and uh, they're, they're already like freakishly strong. So yeah. you have to be like, if you're going to impress a room full of, you know, gym goers, that's difficult. Um, but also, uh, gym goers are also, uh, they kind of gravitate towards the things that they do in the competition. So like, it's hard to impress, let's say power lifters with something that's not a squat deadlift or bench press. Yeah. Like they may not care how much I can leave her with a hammer. Right. So I have to do something really crazy to impress them, but like normal people, you know, um, they have this much greater appreciation for it. So when you do a show at like a comic con, like you can really like just blow somebody's mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's like really cool um, when you can like, you know, a lot of times it's like a kid or something, but you can you can do something and just see like, you know, like they have never seen anything like that before. And that's a really cool experience. So I think my favorite show um, this year was the comic con we did in um, Martinsburg. And, uh, and then I think um, our biggest show we auditioned for 
uh, America's Got Talent this year. Okay. Yeah. What was that like? Man, it's they're the most um, organized and disorganized thing that I've ever dealt with. I mean, on one end, it, I was like, wow, man, like this is like crazy put together well. And then other times I was like, do you guys know what you're doing? <laughs> but but yeah. uh, it was a good experience. It was super fun. Um, when you get out there and you do that, you get to meet all the, you know, Terry Crews and all those people. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's it was pretty cool to see uh, that level of production of a show. Like I've never been um, involved with anything that like, you know, this is multi-million dollar, uh, you know, performance and, and show and, and production and everything. I've never been around anything like that. And so that was really cool just to see like what goes into it and how it's done and all these cool little things. Um, just by doing it, I think it helps uh, our show, um, our performance, just by mm -hmm. seeing some of that stuff and how they make it seem larger than life. Um, yeah. So that was really cool. Now, is there, I, I don't know how it all works. Can you tell us kind of what was in the audition or is it like under wraps? Um, I actually don't know. I guess I'll tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Okay>. So uh, <laughs> uh, I guess, I mean, it, everything uh, that season aired and everything. So I guess it's cool. Oh, okay. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't know if, um, how recent or, you know, what was going on with it or anything like that, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, like our stage performance, what did we do? Um, yeah. Man, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a haze, honestly. But um, we had like three minutes, which, <laughs> which when you think about lifting stuff, you're like three minutes. That's plenty of time. We were like, it was like, I was out of breath every time we, um, uh, like practiced and and when we did the show mm -hmm. because you're moving super fast. Um, to get through these old time feats and transitioning, that was like the hardest part was like <clears throat> when you would do one feat and transition to the next, you had to like move. So it made it way different than when you're uh, at these festivals, you kind of, you know, bend a nail or whatever it is. And then you kind of talk to the crowd and maybe you give the nail to some kid in the front row and then you go back over and you like, this was like, boom, boom. This is more like a, honestly, it was more like a pro wrestling match than than the uh <laughs> the festival type shows um but we did um um i can do a, i do a split so i did a, a split on the floor and hannah did a split behind me on two chairs and then um i bent a uh horseshoe while in the split um which is uh pretty difficult because you can't kind of get into the normal positions that you get mm -hmm. into to bend um a horseshoe um of course everybody knows well all the steel benders know it also depends on the horseshoe you use. So it wasn't like I was using a Bronco horseshoe or something, it, it, you know, but, um, and then Hannah bent, um, a nail, uh, and then we hopped up and, uh, I stood on the two chairs that she had split on and she got under me and lifted me up. So she held me on her shoulders, kind of like a, like a yoke, but we're both tall ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, what did I do while I was up? Oh, I uh, I rolled up a frying pan. Okay. <clears throat> while I'm on, on her shoulders, you know, and, and that feats just to show like she can hold me. Um, and I weighed, I think I weighed 370 at the time. Um, so she can hold 370 long enough for me to roll up this frying pan. Then we hopped down and um, we finished with, uh, she did um, a yoga wheel pose, which is like a bridge, but you're on your hands too. And I put a cinder block on her uh, belly area. And then I swung a sledgehammer and broke the cinder block over her. And that was the end of our. Uh, okay. Set. Yeah. That was one thing I was going to mention when you're talking about, you know, doing the splits and then, you know, having to sit up on the shoulders and stuff like, I was just going to say like, could you just kind of mention like height and weight? Because when people see you on the screen, they might not realize how big you actually are. Uh, yeah, I'm six five, and I'm usually between three fifty and uh, three seventy is the most I've ever weighed, but I'm usually at least three fifty. Gotcha. Yeah, so like six five, three fifty, but doing splits and everything like yeah, there's not a lot of people that size that have that mobility. Mm -hmm. No, I and uh, you know I don't I don't know if we want to go down that the flexibility rabbit hole at all, but uh, 
<laughs> I um, worked on that early on, probably in my, probably between 19 and 20 years old. Um, I decided I wanted to do the split and I really worked at it. And um, once you get it down, like I probably haven't done a split in three or four months and I could just go do it. Like once, once you gain that um, flexibility, as long as you remain somewhat active in some way, you can hang on to it. Uh, I think getting there is honestly the hardest part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just figured that was something I would bring up. Like, you know what I mean? Just from the performances mm -hmm. and stuff. And then, yeah, we don't have to, we don't have to go down the mobility rabbit hole or anything, but um, just, yeah, just pointing out kind of the, I guess the rarity of that and kind of what kind of how that would add to the show and the performance that you guys have going on mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so this is, this is going off of uh, topics to discuss here, right. That you yeah. have for me. Um, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so you wrote down, why are grip competitions so poorly organized and poorly judged? Yes. Could you just elaborate what you mean by some of those points there? Yes. Um, okay. And I I just want to point out, I'm not bad mouthing anyone individually. Um, I like the people that run uh, grip sport. I think Jed is, is great. Um, I think Ode Haugen is great. Ricardo's a cool dude. Um, however, um, an example of disorganized, um, I usually have people competing in arm lifting at the Arnold. Um, so they release an itinerary hey, we're going to do this at this time and this time and this time. And I realize it's the Arnold. It's chaos. It's things get moved. But one year where they had a, a rules meeting, I think it was set for um, like 11 a.m. or something or 10 a.m. So, you know, we're driving over. Um, I dropped my person off and went to the parking garage so they could hurry up and get to the meeting. And they go in and I park and make my way in and they come up and I'm like, <clears throat> aren't you supposed to be at the meeting? Oh no, they decided to do it at nine. <laughs> they, so they didn't tell anybody. No, they said, well, everybody's here. We'll do it. But everybody wasn't there. My person wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> like, like how is this okay for a sport? Now, if you want to say, well, this isn't that serious. And this is like some barbecue meat and it's some kind of sport that's played at a bar. Like, uh, What's that cornhole? Sure. This is like if you're at a tailgate and you're playing cornhole, sure. We can have the rules meeting, whatever. Everybody's <laughs> going to be drunk. You don't even have to keep score. Okay. <laughs> sure. If that's how we want to do it. And I'm cool with that. Like I'm fine. I'm from West Virginia. We play cornhole. Right. <laughs> so, But <laughs> if you're going to have a pro division, that implies that this thing is like kind of serious. Mm hmm you should probably have your rules meeting when you said you're going to have it. And, gotcha. and this is just one example. And I'm only using that example because that's at the highest level. Like you're at the Arnold and this is like the world championship for this sport. Right. Um, and you can't have the rules meeting when it's stated. Like, how is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, that makes sense. It's, like, I just don't understand. And it's been like that. Um, and I've done a lot of these shows. I did, I did a show, um, a grip show in, um, Philadelphia. This was probably, probably 2017. Um, we were supposed to do, uh, a grip show it was two days. We we're supposed to do two lifts on the first day and the rest of the lifts on the second day. I get there. I'm sitting there. We had this rules meeting. I'm still sitting there and I see people leaving. So I go up and I ask the guy that's running it. I'm like, Hey, uh, like when are we starting to do our lifts? Like I'd like to warm up. Oh, we're just going to do them all tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, like again, now I'm not complaining about things changing. Um, because I don't care if you, you could change all the events in the same day. Um, I'm still showing up to win. I don't care about any of that stuff like that bothers some people. I don't care. But what I do care about is like, can you tell me while I'm still sitting here? Like maybe I could leave if we're not going to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I are we going to do it? Are we not? Why am I still sitting here? Um, 
So those sort of things, like, that's not happening in the NFL. Okay. If we're going to be taken seriously, if it's going to be taken seriously, you can't, that, that stuff should not be happening. Um, so that stuff that bothers me, I try to bring it up, but people are, I guess, as a whole, the grip, grip community is cool with this thing being treated like tailgating, uh, cornhole <laughs> instead of being treated like a, a real sport. I don't know. Um, but then the judging, man, okay. and, and this isn't just grip sport. This is everything. I mean, strong man, it's getting, it gets worse and worse, but, um, grip stuff, the judging is so inconsistent from place to place. Um, it's like, and then I think a lot of the people coming in don't even understand the spirit of the challenges. And then if they, if you don't understand kind of like the, like where the challenge comes from or what the challenge specifically is, it's hard to understand the rule set or even to then make the rules. Cause anybody can run these shows, right? You pay whatever the sanctioning fee is, mm -hmm. you know, that some guy down the road could say, Hey, I've done this for a week. I'm going to run a show. Well, does he understand the true nature of the challenges? So when he makes the rules, do they make sense? Okay. Maybe not. And you run into that a lot. I see, uh, let's take rolling thunder. For example, people lifting it, posting it on their leg, people letting it fly. How is that? How is that cool? And if, if you want to say in the rules, we're doing rolling thunder leg posting aloud. Cool. Let's do that. That is now the challenge. That is now the spirit of the challenge. If you're saying we're going to do rolling thunder and that's it, it should be assumed that we are following the rules of Randall J. Strawson, iron mind rules, right? That's the only assumption that can be made. If you're saying, Hey, we're doing rolling thunder and nothing else is stated. But then you'll go to the show and they'll be posting on the leg or they'll be tilting the thing sideways or they'll have their hand jammed over, stopping the rotation of the rolling thunder. How is anybody allowing a rolling thunder lift to fly? If they're stopping the roll, it's called rolling thunder. Yeah. <laughs> if you're stopping the thing from rolling, you have eliminated the spirit of the challenge. You're no longer doing the rolling thunder. You're just doing the thunder. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, man, it, it's funny that you bring that up because there's been a lot of uh, people within the grip community. I think that uh, I don't want to say they're newer, but you know, some people should, I, I feel they should know better, but yeah, you see them bracing on the leg, you see them doing stuff like that. And uh, I think especially this past year, from what I've noticed, there's been a lot of kind of policing that up or making people aware of it. Whereas, you know, in the past, maybe some more stuff was getting, getting by, or maybe people were kind of letting it fly nowadays. Uh, I know, I know Jed's definitely gone on a few rants here and there where uh, you're just trying to clean the sport up when it comes to that kind of stuff, or just clean up the judging um, when it comes to that, you know, because a lot of times with grip sport, we'll be lifted to a knock bar to kind of take away some of the subjectivity of right. knockout, you know, but the thing that still needs to be watched is, is the hand against the frame. Are they tilting it? You know, those things still apply. So just because, you know, one aspect of the judging is kind of removed a little bit. Um, you still get people that'll try to brace or do things incorrectly. And some of that does get through every now and then. Um, and regardless of organization um, and I say arm lifting or grip sport, whichever, um, I think we see stuff like that. There's a few still, you know, there, there's still some inconsistencies. I think things have improved. I know the one thing you mentioned was like in 2017. So I, I know you've probably been involved and done stuff since then, obviously, but like all the competitions that I've been a part of, or we've been running recently, and this might be maybe more considered like top end people to where, you know, okay, they, they, they understand the rules, but everything's, mostly ran pretty smooth but there still is every now and then and, and everybody will kind of talk about it or it'll get pointed out there still is on some of those bigger platforms those bigger stages um just that little bit of inconsistency or that little bit of kind of uh, treating it like a backyard sport to where i you know i, I don't know that it's ever going to actually get to where everybody claims they want it to be 
everybody claims they want it to be, you know, big time expo main stage, this, that blah, blah, blah treated basically like professional, you know, mm-hmm. cash payouts, whatever. Um, but then when it comes time to uh, just get consistent judging or just show up and be where you're supposed to be, you know, weighing in whatever I, I'm giving just numerous little examples, but yeah, you know, you, you would kind of expect uh, more professionalism coming from everybody. If that's where they, if that's the direction they want the sport to go, you know? So I've, I've definitely seen and experienced some of that stuff as well. Um, and like I said, I don't have to go on a tangent name drop and tell everybody the date, the time, but whatever. But like uh, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's out there, you know, it's happened. And uh, I think that is one of the biggest things for both sides on that from an organizational standpoint is uh, I don't think that either side is completely perfect. If I'm just kind of being a neutral party, just, you know, randomly talking, I don't think that arm lifting is a completely perfect system. I don't think that grip sport international is a completely perfect system. And I think the biggest thing that both sides would need to do is really just kind of police up their own house. Sure. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I think, I think Jed is leading the charge on the judging and he does, he brings up a lot of good points about, you know, bracing um, on the thigh and, and a lot of that stuff. Um, and I do appreciate that. He's one of the only people that seems to be adamantly vocal about it um, mm-hmm. that I have seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I see it. I see it a lot and I see it in strongman. and I'm of the opinion, the stricter, the standard, the better I would rather see. Um, and, and there's examples of this. I would rather see good lifts turned down periodically, like in the Olympics, Olympic weightlifting, super strict standards. Mm-hmm. Once a year <laughs> or once in the Olympics, somebody will do a good lift and they'll miss it and everybody will lose their mind. That was a good lift. Okay, sure. We, we sacrificed one. But you look at Strongman and there's a hundred lifts throughout the year that were questionable right yeah the olympics there's one it was a good lift turned down but we had a hundred bad lifts turned up yeah i would much rather have one good lift turned down than have a hundred bad lifts turned up that's just my opinion i think the standard should be super high and if this and and why well one's in the olympics how do you think they got there like (laughs) you know the strong men the pros they aren't making any money like raise the standard and everything will start to take care of itself. And I think it would be the same with arm lifting. If you want on the main stage, if you want more people involved, raise the standards. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Yeah. Like I said, I think it's a good point. Um, And I think there's been a lot of people, I know you mentioned Jed there as far as like addressing some of the stuff, but yeah, there's a ton of people that I think are trying to, move it that direction it's just a matter of getting everybody on the same page but stuff like this people just talking about it just the fact that it's getting brought up i think is a good thing that kind of keeps it yeah keeps it fresh in people's minds or if they weren't aware of that kind of stuff it at least kind of checks them a little bit and like oh hey you know maybe 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 i need to show up to the weigh-ins on time you know on the, like on, <laughs> on the individual you know like oh, I'm just, oh it's just arm lifting you know, at the arnold i can just stroll in 15 minutes late or you know and I know there's a window usually to weigh in maybe that's, you know, a certain time frame. but I'm saying like you get these people that you try to host or promote something. And, you know, you got people like, well, is it okay if I'm two pounds over? It's like, no, it's not okay. If you're two pounds over, <laughs> no, like, it's not. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's weight classes. Like, you know, like mm. you have to weigh what, what you said, you know, what the scale says, that's what it is. Or that's what the weight classes are. So yeah, you got people, you know, I don't know, trying to, squeak a pound or two here or there um way in different times just showing up late you, you know what i mean it just so as as much as maybe we kind of uh briefly kind of talked about the professionalism of the organization and stuff like that that i think also falls on the uh the people that are competing as well conducting oh, yourself def- like largely yeah largely yeah yeah conducting you know conducting yourself like a professional if you're lifting or treating it with that kind of uh, respect, you know, like the same level, like, okay, Hey, 
I'm about to go be on TV or do something, you know, I'm not saying like be delusional or anything, but you know, you're talking about like the America America's got talent type thing where you're like put in front of like multi-million dollar productions where it's like, okay, I like the lights are on. We can't be screwing around. You know what I mean? Like right. this is, this is the real deal. Um, same thing with like, okay, we're your main stage at the Arnold or you're just lifting at the Arnold. Okay. It's like, you know, treat it, treat it a little more professionally as well, I guess, for the individual. Um, and like I said, I've just seen people show up late, kind of just do what they want to do. And I don't know if that's from the top down or if that's just kind of the, you know, like you kind of said, maybe the middle of those pyramids sometimes. Um, but uh, yeah, no, definitely good points, man. Um, so I think that pretty much covers, uh, I guess, the organization, judging, things like that. And like I said, for the most part, I think it runs pretty smooth, but there are probably, like you said, very few good lifts that are getting turned down, if any. And there are a lot of those, uh, you know, the questionable lifts or the the braced lifts or whatever, whatever the case is that kind of squeak by. And I think if that ratio were to flip a little bit, like you, like you mentioned, it would, uh, it would be for the better, you know, um, so going to dive off a of grip for a second. Okay. You mentioned, you mentioned arm wrestling, right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, uh, you through this whole journey you've done of different strength stuff, you know, from the strongman performing stuff, um, steel bending, whatever the case is. Currently arm wrestling has been more of a focus for you. Is there anything, um, I guess to update the listeners on that you'd be doing for uh, arm wrestling. Is it just something that you kind of uh, got into the last couple of years? Have you always been doing that? And what exactly are your goals for that? Uh, so somewhere, I think back in like 2014, there was a strongman show um, they called Ragnarok and it was four combat strongman events. Um, it was uh, Moss wrestling, arm wrestling, sumo wrestling, and this thing called shield battle, which was, uh, basically sumo wrestling, but both people had a giant wooden Viking shield mm -hmm. and you had to bash each other out, out of the circle. Uh, super fun event. And um, I love those uh, types of um, head to head, uh, I guess, combative events. Um, so when I did that, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to start doing more Moss wrestling. And that was available at the time. I knew people doing it. I've seen people doing it. You could buy the boards and stuff. So I kind of got in, <laughs> interested in that and was doing it, but I didn't know you could do sumo wrestling. So that was in the back of my mind. Like I want to do this, but in, I didn't know it was here at all. I'm thinking like, well, you'd have to go to Japan. So I'm probably never going to get to do it. Um, arm wrestling was another one that I was like, this is around here somewhere, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Um, and then to my knowledge, nobody else has ever done shield battles. So <laughs> that one was off the table, but, uh, <laughs> so I thought, well, you know, I'm going to run into arm wrestling at some point, but Moss wrestling was like right there and available. So I kind of jumped on that and I started doing that a little bit. And years later I went to the Salt Lake city fit con for the stone lifting championships there. And I signed up for that and I signed up and did a sumo wrestling tournament the same day. Um, so after I stone lifted, I did a sumo wrestling tournament. And while I was standing there waiting to do sumo, this guy comes over and says, Hey, do you want to arm wrestle? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we're running a tournament right here. And I said, well, I'm doing sumo wrestling. I was like, but I'll do both. But if I'm, <laughs> yeah, but if I'm sumo wrestling, then like I'm going to miss my match. And he said, no, if you sign up, I'll make them wait for you. And I said, okay. So I signed up. <laughs> now keep in mind, I like, I didn't train. I did not do nothing about arm wrestling other than the tournament I had done previously. And uh, so I do a sumo a match and then run over and arm wrestle a guy and go right back and sumo a guy and go back over and arm wrestle a guy. <laughs> and I did that the whole time. And um, I made some connections there. Okay. And um, learned about some other people that did it. Started talking to them. Kind of got some interest, but there were no teams near me. Um, 
So I didn't really know how to train for it and stuff, but I started watching it a little bit. Fast forward a couple of years later, I did find a team. So I started training with a team and that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing more um, tournaments. And then um, a guy here started a team in Morgantown, luckily. So then I joined that team because I was driving an hour and a half to the other team um, yeah. every weekend. So now I'm just 10 minutes away. And uh, now I'm part of a team here and I'm competing more. And um, I love it. I, I think it's great. Uh, it's painful, but it's great. So um, with arm wrestling, uh, I, I guess the direction I would take it is, is that where a lot of your training is also shifting? Or um, how, how's that shaped out? So... I am, <laughs> this probably isn't a popular opinion with people because um, people like to play their sport and they come up with all these excuses to just like do more versions of their sport. You know, like let's mm -hmm. take boxing. People go to boxing practice and then they'll go to the gym and they'll just throw more punches with weights. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> you already threw a bunch of, what are you doing? Um, go lift weights and get strong and do boxing and this will work out. That's my kind of my um, gotcha. uh, philosophy for most things. So I haven't altered my training much, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, my training schedule is um, I squat on Tuesdays. I bench on Fridays. And then um, I go to arm wrestling practice about e either about every other week or every third week. I go to arm wrestling practice. Um, occasionally I'll do some little arm wrestling exercises, like maybe cupping or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, <clears throat> but mostly it's just get strong and practice. And I think if you do that, you're going to do pretty well in most things. And that's kind of the approach I've done with everything. Like I squat, I bench, I'll practice lifting a couple stones and I'll go to the stone lifting championships and I'll do okay. Um, I don't even lift stones that often in training, <laughs> okay. you know, just get strong, practice a little, you'll be fine. So that's kind of my um, approach. Now, as I get better, um, you know, there will probably be a point when of, you know, uh, diminishing returns with everything and you'll have to change and adjust and all that. So if I get to a higher level, sure, I may have to start doing, some of these more specific things like pronation. Um, I, I may have to start doing that at some point pretty soon, but I think for most people in most sports, if you just get strong and you practice your sport a little, you'll be fine. Yeah. I think some people uh, see it in the fight world a lot where like, you know, people will, they'll be, doing rounds of pads, rounds of sparring, rounds of whatever, and then they want to go to the gym, and the first thing they want to do is set up a 10-station circuit and run around in circles, and you're just like, you're <laughs> you're already doing the rounds. You yeah, don't you already did that. Go, you, don't need to, you don't need to go. Yeah, so uh, the example you gave, I, I, I totally could relate with. Um, so uh, but I wish you the best of luck in, uh, in, in the arm wrestling and stuff like that for any upcoming stuff that you have and kind of working towards that. Um, now just mentioning all these things, I, I know you kind of like doing them all, but is there anything that stands out the most? Maybe that like the funnest thing you've done, um, competition wise, man. Um, you're gonna get me rambling here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think moss wrestling is probably the most fun. Really? I think, okay. yeah. oh man, I, I just, I love it. Um, super fun. I think um, there's just something about, you know, when you both got your hands on that stick and you're it's like, man, hey, this is my stick. You know? <laughs> you're know, you taking it. There's just something primal and like just very simple, simplistic, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, it's easier. This, I think this is why a lot of people don't like it too but but the reason they don't like it is the reason i do like it there is something to me much more urgent if we're both 
directly against each other in a strength capacity. Like if they load a bar and you, you lift it and then I lift it and you beat me in that way. Um, now I'm pretty competitive, so I'm not going to be like smiling about oh, it. Yeah. Like but you beat me, but I will try much harder <laughs> if we're holding on to that stick. You see, like there oh, is yeah, just no, something yeah. about that. Um, same with arm wrestling or whatever, but I think moss wrestling is more fun than uh, arm wrestling. Um, arm wrestling is more available in, you know, there's a lot more tournaments and things, but moss wrestling is more fun. Um, I think something that people probably don't know is steel bending is probably the most strenuous thing I've ever done. Um, like I said, I went to Salt Lake City FitCon and did the Stone Lifting Championships, a full sumo wrestling tournament. And it was no joke. The, um, the European national champion was there. I actually uh, defeated him. Um, if you watch the new video where Eddie Hall was doing sumo wrestling, yeah. the guy that he, the guy that he beats at the end of the tournament, he was there and I beat him. Um, okay. So this tournament was yeah. no joke. It was like a serious tournament yeah. and I was arm wrestling. Okay. <laughs> I was wrecked the next day, <laughs> but last year after the steel bending championships in Michigan, like it was worse than doing those three events. I mean, I was destroyed, wrecked, like didn't think I could drive home, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. like done, wrecked. Now, uh, bringing up steel bending, uh, just, just to kind of dive off on that, because there's a lot of grip people that do steel bending as well. Um, that was, uh, was that like the national championships for steel bending that you were bringing up? And so, or, <laughs> or is it like state, whatever, but. It, it, Don Cummings is the one that uh, that hosts it, correct? Yeah, and it's called the Michigan Steel Bending Championships. Okay, but it might as well be the national championships because I don't think there's any other steel bending championships that happen annually. Like um, Alex Gia put one on in New York um, uh, last year, year before, and there's been a couple other others that spring up but that's been the longest running one and it's every single year. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, it's the national championship because it's like basically the only one and yeah. all the top people go. Uh, so kind of is kind of isn't, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> you know, um, um, how'd you do with that? Just curious. Or if you can kind of remember roughly how people kind of placed or, I wasn't top three, but I, I, um, every year I've done it, I've got, I've got better. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the first year I went, I think I got next to last and I've kind of inched my way up and I hit PRs, um, every year I go, uh, now normally I'm not real PR oriented. Um, I'm going to compete. Like I want to beat people. I'm mm -hmm. not concerned with numbers or you know what like i just i'm there to beat people i'm not there to put up numbers or whatever um you know I, if i was at a powerlifting show maybe but mm -hmm. uh normally i'm not like that but uh, i do notice that i have pr'd every time i've done the steel bending championships which i think is really cool um and i love going those guys are really good and it is a driving force to like i want to make it onto the podium so <laughs> Uh, give it enough time. I'll make it to the fifth. It might take 10 years, but I'm getting on that podium. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, I haven't done a whole lot of it, but I've messed around with some steel bending. Just obviously, you know, when you get into grip or that world, it's like grip arm wrestling, steel bending. There's a lot of guys that are kind of all in the same, you know, kind of same stuff or you'll run into mm -hmm. the same names. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, like, I've, I've screwed around with like some double underhand bending and some reverse bending and stuff like that and done some different stuff, but uh, it's definitely not like any like focus or like big priority, but I, I was tempted, you know, I don't know if I'd go and try to compete in it, but every now and then, you know, to bend some stuff, it's uh it's pretty interesting. But yeah, I can, uh, I can kind of second what you meant. Now I haven't done anything as strenuous as what you did, like a competition, but just from, I mean, me screwing around in the garage, you know, bending some stuff, and it doesn't seem like I did a whole lot. 
and it'll like fry my wrists out or just, I don't know. It's just kind of hard on your body, honestly, if you're not used to it. It's it's brutal. I mean, like one of the things about it, I think that makes it so um, hard is, you know, if you're doing, um, let's say a, a, a deadlift and, and you bust this bar off the floor, right? And I'm talking um, like a, not a grip deadlift, like, you know, you're strapped in or whatever. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> you're lifting this thing and you bust it off the ground. And it's coming up. And it's really high max effort, right? And you're, But you're not going to get it. Like, how much time do you think you could keep that thing off the ground? <laughs> you see it in competitions. It, it's what? Four yeah. or five seconds, something like that, maybe. You'll see it come up and, and then they'll drop it, right? Yeah. Well, steel bending, because of the nature of it and the way that it is, that effort can last so much longer. Oh, because yeah. you don't have a weight dragging you down. You're fighting this thing that's just not moving. So you could be putting out... Now, your power meter is dr- dropping, but it's maxed out where it's at, right? The whole time. Mm-hmm. So it's just maximum effort for, I've seen people go 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Like that is rough. Like, Oh yeah. And you're doing that. You know, I think, um, what is there like seven events at the steel bending championships this year? Uh, it it might've been something like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's more than a strongman competition because typically, well, some of the, like, Ode Haugen does one that's got 10, but typically they're, like, five events. Mm-hmm. And the Steel Bending Championships usually has more than five. So you're you're reaching that, <laughs> that uncomfortable grind probably at least two or three times throughout that day where you're yeah. just redlining for a full minute. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I've seen people pass out. Like, you're just <laughs> passing out and uh, – it is rough. I'm telling you, it was like this last year was the hardest competition, uh, like physically demanding wise that I've ever done. And I've been, I'm going into my 18th year of competing, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, you, you really have, in, in a way you've kind of covered all these things with, uh, we talked about like the various strength backgrounds that you have and stuff like that. But uh, talking about being involved in the arm wrestling, steel bending, and then you've obviously done some grip. Now with that being said, do you remember the last time that you did a active, like, like a grip competition or like anything that was sanctioned? Can you remember that at all? Or has that been something recently maybe, or have you kind um, of, yeah. I did a grip competition at um, Alex Gia's place. Um, when he did his steel okay. bending thing, there was um, we did a yeah. grip competition first, and I want to say that it was sanctioned through one. We used the um, I can't remember that thing's the the knock bar. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been it would have been a grip sport thing. Yeah. yeah. So I did that, and that was uh, two years ago, I think. Okay. Yeah. Now, with that being said. Are there any plans? I know you're arm wrestling. Are there any plans to maybe jump back in and do a competition or does it just have to be the, the right events or the right time and place for that to pop up? So, (laughs) um, I would, I would do one, uh, for sure. Um, I've been in the game a while, so sometimes I'm a little picky, so bear with me, but, uh, you know, I, when I pick my strongman shows, I'm, I'm like, ah, that looks boring. That looks boring. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's got to have good events. Um, something that I'm like some, you know, that I'm really going to be excited about. And it's probably going to have to be um, grip sport or uh, whatever Jed's is. Cause I don't think I've never done a competition with the knock bar other than at Alex Gia's. Um, and I've done probably, I don't know, a dozen arm lifting events. Um, so I would probably go that direction just cause I haven't done as many. Okay. Um, but it wouldn't matter as long as the events are cool. I would do either one. Um, but just thinking off the top of my head, I would probably steer that, that direction. And I know that Jed's, uh, organization has, there's a much higher chance of doing a hammer lever. So <laughs> <laughs> I know that was going to bring me to my next question was, uh, 
if if you said it would take you know a certain event lineup to maybe get you fired up, what would be your let's say you're putting on a grip uh, competition, or let's say there was one that you'd be willing to go to, what would that event lineup look like? If you could kind of map out, maybe I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but <laughs> you know what would uh what would that event lineup look like? Um, what do they usually do? Three events. Uh, it, it depends. I mean, some usually about four. Four. Is pre- four is pretty standard. Yeah. Uh, so well, uh, obviously, uh, the hammer lever would be, you know, I'd love mm-hmm. to do that in a. I'd love to do that as a uh, sanctioned, judged thing. I don't think I've ever done that um, in a sanctioned event. So that would be cool to be judged on my ability to do that. Um, then. Uh, I like holds, so a Hercules hold or maybe a silver bullet, one or the other. Um, okay. I, I, I just really like those longer hold style things. Um, <laughs> I like the wrist wrench a lot. Okay. <laughs> Everybody hates that one, but I think the, maybe not so much for displaying strength, but I think the training benefit, the the strength building benefit of the wrist wrench is... Um, very is pretty much unparalleled it, it is one of the best tools i think um and then anything with the country crush or raptor I'm, I'm cool with any of that stuff i think that's one of the best implements out there too um just because of how uh interchangeable it is you can clean it just there's all the you know the different connection points you can do arm wrestling with it you can do grip with it super good training tool um, the napalm's nightmare too, actually, because of the same uh, versatility. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've actually never done that one, so I would actually pick the napalm's nightmare. I think so. Hammer lever, uh, Hercules hold, um, napalm's nightmare, and then uh, wrist wrench. Okay, no, that would be like up. a perfect. If you wanted me <laughs> to show up, if you did that, I'd be there. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um... <laughs> So, um, basically with laying out kind of that event lineup and everything, like I said, we kind of discussed a lot of the competition, a lot of the training stuff. Um, is there anything regarding grip strength or training for grip or anything that maybe, like I said, we've just overlooked or that you'd like to add, or it doesn't have to be grip specific. It could be a strength thing that maybe we were going to discuss and kind of overlooked or anything like, you know what I mean? Just anything, anything that comes to mind. Uh, well, we touched on it earlier about, you know, strengthening the whole body, but um, we were talking about the wrist wrench. I think a lot of people neglect their wrist. Um, and as you know, with um, with like a rolling thunder, it may not be uh, as beneficial, but if you're chasing the inch dumbbell or um, if you're doing fixed axle bar lifts, uh, your wrist becomes a big player in that game. Um, you're, you're most people are not going to lift an inch dumbbell with a weak wrist. No. Uh, I I mean, I would say anybody that's lifted it probably, uh, whether they know it or not, probably has a freaky strong wrist, in fact. Um, So I think getting that wrist strong, super important. Um, I think uh, the biceps, um, you know, a lot of people make fun of curls and stuff. I do sometimes too, but your bicep is super important for that radiant tension when when you're lifting, especially if you're going to use that uh, bent arm technique. Um, but certain stuff, like if you're using the two handed uh, country crush, well, your arm has to be bent. You're not going to lift that with two straight arms. So that bicep becomes very important. Um, I've seen people not very often, mind you, but uh, people, uh, somebody tore a bicep uh, lifting something um, like a hilt or something. Yeah. V bar, you'll see it. Yeah. Like, I mean, just different V bar, whether it's a hilt or something of that nature. Um, If they're, yeah, you know what I mean? Just depending on how they're gripping it with their hand, how how pronated or supinated they are. And yeah, definitely seen some bicep injuries like that. Yeah. Well, you can, you can take, you know, uh, get it strong and stretch it out and keep it healthy. And that, that doesn't happen. So curls, reverse curls, um, reverse curls, uh, are great for your thumb strength. Actually, if you do them right, uh, he builds the bicep, builds the forearm, builds the back of the forearm part, another part that's neglected. Cause like I said, everybody wants to do the competition stuff. 
you got to leave the competition if you want to stay healthy and have the longevity. So you got to work the opposite side of the forearm, especially if you want to keep healthy wrists and elbows. Um, so all that's important. Work the whole arm. That, that's why it's called arm lifting, right? It's not, it's not finger lifting. Well, it's well, yeah, the whole it, arm. It, at least, yeah, for, for one side of it. Yeah. And then, like I said, for grip sport, I mean, obviously you're putting all your body into the grip. So, or, or, or you should be engaging your full body for a grip lift. Like you said, your hand is squeezing it, but it's your body that's moving the basically static position of your hand. I mean, there's yeah. maybe a little bit of movement and whatever, but yeah, your, your hand is essentially in a, in most cases, a fixed position. It's not like a crush thing with like a gripper or something where, you know, you're actually having movement. Um, once you're locked in, you're pretty much locked in. Um, yeah, I think the, um, the grip is the focus. Mm -hmm. Your body's mm -hmm. it's like arm wrestling. Well, you watch these arm wrestling videos no, it, without fail. You see a arm wrestling video on YouTube, go in the comments. Somebody will say, well, he's cheating. He's using his whole body. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's using his whole body, but the arm is the weak link, right? Like mm -hmm. you throw your whole body at your arm. Can it, can it handle it? And that's the training, right? you want to get your arm strong enough to be able to, to handle all the force you can put through the arm. Well, it's the same in grip. You know, you want to be able to, to lift or move as much as you can hold preferably more so that you can move it faster. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so grip is really the, I guess the focus or, or kind of the, the, the uh, just a, it's a single link in the chain, like you said earlier. And, you know, if you have a weak link, well, your chain's going to break. Okay. Um, like I said, we've been rolling for a pretty good amount of time, pretty good subjects. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that, that we had overlooked or anything like that, or if there was anything else that you were going to make mention of. Um, anything like that, or are you pretty much good to go on everything? Uh, no, I think uh, we're uh, that's uh, good if, if, um, if you're good, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then do you uh, just want to let people know like where to reach you, whether it be, I, I can always put stuff in the description and other stuff like that for people's pages. I'll share them and stuff. But uh, if you wanted to let people like, I guess, know if you're on different platforms, you know, where to find you or how to get a hold of you, you could go ahead and do that if you'd like. All right. Yeah. They can send their hate mail over to uh, Instagram, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Instagram, Mauser strength. Um, I respond pretty quickly. If you message me, uh, I'm also on Facebook, John Mauser. And um, you can get me through my website, um, mauserpower.com. But uh, honestly, um, Instagram or Facebook, I'll, I'll probably respond faster. Okay, gotcha. Yep. I just wanted to make sure you had a chance to kind of throw some stuff out there and mm -hmm. uh, just let people know if they listen to you talk for an hour or so. At least, you know, <laughs> hey, how can I follow up with this guy or check back in and see what he's up to? You know, is he, is he arm wrestling? Is he sumo wrestling? What's going on? You know, so just, uh, yeah, just wanted to make sure that uh, people had a follow up. So, mm -hmm. um if, uh, if you feel pretty good with that, man, uh, I can go ahead and wrap it up and uh, yeah. we, can, we can call it a show. And cool. uh, I really appreciate you coming on, man, and taking the time, just kind of sharing some training knowledge and just uh, sharing a different perspective than what we've heard before. Yeah, man, no problem. It was a blast.